بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we pray that Allah bless this Q&A session and make it a reason anyway our Allah open any for us the doors of understanding and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive any our sins and uh, answer any our prayers and we pray that Allah guide all of us inshallah ta'ala to the straight path the path any of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen So inshallah yani, we will uh, answer yani, the first question yani, today first question yani, is asking Assalamu alaikum Ustaz Anwar wa alaikum assalam Before I proceed with my question I would like to clarify my intentions of asking these following questions That is to be acquainted with an answer that is grounded by Islamic fundamentals inshallah My questions are Is Islamic morality and jurisprudence subjective or objective and to what extent? Also what is the relevance of science in understanding our deen And to what extent can we use science to understand and appreciate our deen? My sincerest thanks to you, Ustaz, for allowing me the opportunity to clarify my doubts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our ummah and keep us fixated on this path, inshallah ta'ala, ameen, ya rabbal alameen. So inshallah ta'ala, yani we will go yani point yani by point yani to address any this question. Number one, the yani question yani is asking, is Islamic morality and jurisprudence subjective or objective? The Islamic and immorality and jurisprudence is objective. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uh, sent any revelation to prophets and messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and who commands and prohibit. So Allah is the one and who, who explain any to us what is any the truth and what is falsehood, what is uh, the permissible and what is the prohibited. So for example, Prayers any is compulsory, is wajib. Uh, we are not any saying any this is any subjective any some some people uh, at times any prayer can be uh, compulsory any for you at times any it is not compulsory for you. So we have to understand that these are commandments any of Allah subhanahu wa taala, uh, and commandments any of Allah subhanahu wa taala they do not change. Uh, Allah any yani, is the one any yani, who commanded with this any yani, commandments and likewise any yani, the prohibitions and yani, we say for example fornication and adultery any yani, is prohibited. So there is no room any yani, to say that it is permissible. Uh, so when as far as the truth and falsehood, uh, as far any yani, as what is any yani, obligatory and what is any yani, prohibited, it is clearly uh, mentioned any yani, in the Sharia law, yani our ahkam Sharia. So maybe I will explain the meaning any yani, of the divine law. So if you go back any to the definition any of the laws, whether we are speaking any about the uh, the laws any of morality or laws any of jurisprudence, we go back any to the the divine any laws. What is any the laws of the Sharia? Or what is any the divine laws any of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? So the definition and it goes back is al khitabullah al mutalik bi afal al mukallafin. So whenever any we speak any about the laws any of Islam, it has any a relation to the revelation any from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we as Muslims, any we must understand that the one uh, who created us, who brought us any into existence, any is the one any who knows what is good and bad for us. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, He make it obligatory for things any that brings about any goodness any for us, and He made things any that are forbidden uh, are those things any that bring about harm any towards us. So the the Sharia yani, is aimed yani, towards yani, giving the good yani, for human being and to repel what is bad yani, for, for human beings. And this is where yani, we study in Maqasid Sharia uh, that the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the laws yani, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is understood yani, as Dar'ul Mafasid wa Jalbul Masalih. That it is aimed yani, at uh, what you call it, uh, bringing about any yani, goodness and repelling what is, uh, what is, what is bad. So good any is good and bad any what is bad and everything any has been uh, what you call it uh, legislated any by the divine any legislator that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it comes any to the laws any of Islam, it is khitabullah al-muta'alik bi af'alil mukallafin. Always any we have to remember this. This is yani 
the command any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we say the um, revelation any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, that is related to the actions any of human beings that is related to actions of human beings so we in Islam any for example every single action of human beings has a legislated any ruling has any a legislated ruling that is specific that is that is specific any to the actions any of human beings so for example any in islam every single action any that we perform has a ruling uh, whether we are speaking about eating or drinking whether we are speaking about walking and running whether we are speaking any about uh, what you call it uh, the uh, morality whether we are speaking any about the commandments and the prohibitions so every single human actions and it has any a relationship with the laws of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is why yani, we always any say that the sharia or the laws any of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it encompass any all aspects any of human life uh, so the extent any of the uh, relationship or the connection any of these laws any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it encompasses any it encompasses any everything this is point number one point number two uh, when comes any to the laws any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times human beings any have difficulty any to perform any such laws so there are concessions there are concessions yes any we are saying any that the laws any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they, they are any they are objective but at the same time, it is any from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if human beings any find any himself any in a difficult any position to perform such uh, obligations, any for example, then there is a concession that he may perform any that particular ruling and he may any forego some any of the some any of the conditions. So for example, a simple any example, prayers any is compulsory. Prayers is compulsory. Uh, uh, it is wajib upon any every muslim any to perform any the prayers but any if a person any for example any he cannot uh, stand any in prayers due any to an illness any that he has we in in, in islam any we say it is compulsory any that the person when performing any prayers one of the conditions any is that he is he must any stand any in prayers but if he if he is unable any to stand then there is a concession any for him not any to stand any in prayers that means it is permissible any for him any to sit down so here we are speaking any about concession so the laws any of the sharia yani is not any something any uh, we say it is objective but not any to an extent that it is extremely rigid because at the same time any we have to understand that human beings any they have uh, shortcomings and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and in the quran any allah speaks any about the weakness any of human beings any allah say la yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha that Allah will not burden yani, a soul except any what any it is able to. So that is why if a person is unable any to stand any while praying, he is able any to sit down. If he's not able any to sit down, then he's able any to lie down. Uh, if a person any is sick, then he should not fast. For example, uh, fasting any is compulsory any for everyone, but any with certain any conditions. Uh, if a person is unable any to fast, any doctor any mentioned that if you fast any you will pass away or you fast any. Uh, a, 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 a serious any disease any you be afflicted any by a serious any disease that can lead you any to fainting and all these things then it is not any permissible any for him any to fast a person any who is poor any for example any it's not compulsory upon him any to pay the zakah so when we speak any about the sharia law we have certain things that are the commandments and the prohibitions and we have any the conditions so the laws any of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yani, it is applied any to to all uh, yani human beings, but at the same time also yani we have any certain any conditions. Any some human beings any do not meet any those do not meet any those any conditions. So that is why when we speak any about the laws any of Allah subhanahu wa taala, there are three important factors any that we have to understand. Number one is the do's and don'ts. Any I'm just trying any to simplify anything so people can easily any understand. We have any the do's and the don'ts. Any the commandments and the prohibitions. Uh, this is uh, an, uh, uh, a continuation of the definition earlier I mentioned khitabullah mutaalik bi afal mukallafin the uh, revelation of Allah subhanahu wa taala that are related to the actions any of the mukallaf and mukallaf basically in human beings and and, and, and the jinn uh, and then any we have any the three types that that is number one any the prohibition and the commandments and then any we have the choice. There are certain things any that Allah leave you to choose whether you want to do or you do not want to do, and there is no sin or there is no 
reward any if you do or you do not do so there are certain things any in our islamic uh, laws that you have any literally any the choice any to do a particular thing or not any to do a particular thing and then any we have any the third one that is al wada and this is where we mention the uh, circums, uh it, it goes back any to uh, situation situational goes back any to situation and if for example any we say prayers the zohar prayers any is compulsory is compulsory upon upon any human beings any who have reached any certain uh, conditions any that he is has reached uh, puberty that he is baligh that he is aqil that he is uh, what you call it mentally any sound and he has any the capacity any to perform uh, then we say prayers and his prayers and is compulsory but there is some situations any that is binded any to these conditions that the time any of zoho any must come in so when we speak about situational and is divided any into another three parts and we have any the condition the shirt and we have any the sabab and we have any the the mania so shirt any is a condition for example we say prayers any is compulsory Prayers any is compulsory, but you cannot pray unless any you take ablution. Then ablution any becomes any compulsory. So we say ablution is a condition any to prayers. So the original any ruling any is that Allah is commanding us any to perform any prayers. But at the same time also we are unable any to perform any prayers unless any we perform the ablution. So we have any a, a thing any that is called the condition any to those any commandments. And then any we have something any that is the reason a sabab. So earlier, any I mentioned uh, the performance any of zohor prayers. It is wajib any for you to perform any zohor prayers, but you cannot any perform any zohor prayers until the time any of zohor has set in. So the time any of zohor any is the reason of the obligation any of the zohor prayers. And then thirdly, any we have something any that we call the preventive factor, the mania. So for example, if a woman any is having any menses, then she cannot any perform any of the prayers although any prayers any is compulsory but because any of the existence any of a preventive any factor that is any the man yeah, that is a menses then she cannot any perform the the prayers so to understand the laws of the sharia to understand any yani, the uh, laws any of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, whether any yani, we are speaking any about the laws of morality or the laws of jurisprudence so just any to summary there are certain things any that we need to understand Number one, all any laws in, in Islam are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, are, this revelation are the laws that are related to the actions any of human beings. And they are divided any into three categories. Number one, the commandments and the prohibitions. And number two any is a choice. Number three is situational. Number three any is situational. So when we speak any yani, about the commandments and the prohibitions any yani, these are objectives yani, and these are the things any yani, that are uh, specific what are the do's and what are the don'ts and what is compulsory and what is any yani, sunnah what is haram and what is makro so everything any yani, is clear any yani, in everything any yani, is clear any yani, in Islam uh, there are certain any yani, rulings any yani, as what I mentioned Allah give you the choice whether you want to do or you do not want to do for example eating and drinking it is mubah whether you want to eat any your breakfast or you do not want to eat any your breakfast, whether you want to bathe or not any bathe, uh, whether any you want to walk or you want to sit down, this is this is based any on your choice. And then any we have any the third as what we mentioned the situational that is binded any to the commandments. So prayers any is compulsory, but at the same time also any we have any to look any at we have any to look at, at those any conditions in order for us any to perform any the to perform any the commandments correctly so this is basically an overview of the laws any of jurisprudence any the laws any of we basically we in in uh, in usul al-fiqh any we say anything that has relation to the actions any of the actions any of uh, human beings <coughs> so uh, going back any to the earlier any example any i mentioned that if a person any for example has difficulty to stand any in prayers then he is able any to sit down this is a concession uh, likewise any if a person any has no food and he is any in a state of hunger and uh, he got no other food any except pork any for example and he knows any that if he doesn't consume any this pork then he will pass away then it is permissible any at this any situation for him any to consume but to an extent that he is able any to keep himself alive that he cannot have access any to it so we have any all this uh uh, uh, conditions and we have uh, this uh, 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 principles and for example that tells us that if any you are in a state dire state 
where you do not have any choice and your life and it is at stake, then it is permissible and for you, you need to consume what is initially as uh, prohibited so that and you are able and need to save any your you are, you are able and need to save any your life because any in this any situation any we say saving any of lives any is also compulsory and refraining any from the haram is also compulsory but when we make any the comparison any which is given any precedence you need to save any your life or to refrain any from this prohibition so here we say uh, to save any your life and is given any precedence any over uh, what you call it refraining any from uh, performing any the, the prohibitions any in this uh, in this any regard. So these are some any of the examples any I hope uh, it is clear inshallah. So this is basically any the first part of the question. The second part any is asking what is the relevance any of science? Mashallah any science. If you look any at the at the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya yani, speaks any about astronomy, Allah speaks any about biology, Allah speaks any about chemistry, physics, and Allah is telling us uh, uh, to ponder upon any the creations. Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafil layli wa nahari la ayatin li ulil albab. Uh, Allah is saying any that the creations any of the heavens and the earth, the skies any and the earth, the coming any of night and day, these are signs for those any who possess knowledge and intellect. So the Quran any, is addressing the learned, those any who, uh, what you call it, possess any uh, the intellect any to use any the intellect that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has bestowed in human beings any from the ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to think, and to ponder any upon the creations any of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So that is why Muslims any in the past you find there are many Muslims any who are engineers, there are many Muslims any who are doctors, there are many Muslims any who have established laws any in mathematics and physics and chemistry we find any that the islamic any golden age and the islamic any civilization when they come to this realization that the quran and is speaking about science the quran and is telling any human beings any the importance of reading and writing the importance any of studying any this phenomenon that is the creation any of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the path to iman this is any the path any to have conviction to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the path you need to ponder upon the effects of the creations any of the creations any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why we find any our scholars any always any give any this emphasis to study any these sciences. And, and there is no any contradiction any between the human any intellect and revelation. Because any the one any who brought any science into existence, any the, the one any who brought everything any into existence and the birth any of the knowledge any of science any to study this existence any that Allah has brought in, yani is the same one any who who has created any everything and brought everything any into into yani existence. So when a Muslim any look any at science and study the phenomenon yani of uh, physics and chemistry and all any this natural any sciences and astronomy. Uh, it is any yani, a path any for him any to attain conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the one any who brought any this creations any into existence any is our maker. So that is why any in Islam we say that the the the, the first important knowledge any for a Muslim any is ma'rifatullah is to understand our maker who is Allah. So one of the ways any of understanding any the greatness any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to understand any his creation because that is the manifestation any of his power. So when we understand yani, his creations, that we understand that all his creations yani, are created Allah in perfection and how the sun yani, is brought into existence that he, even human beings uh, have no knowledge of, that human beings yani, is unable yani, to bring such things yani, into existence, how yani, this earth yani, is rotating around the sun, the coming, coming yani, of night yani, and day, the, the creation yani, of the animals, Afala yanzuruna ilal ibili kaifa Do they not ponder upon the camel, how it is created? Now any we look any at the camel how Allah designed the camel any that the camel any is able to store water that the camel any has these eyelashes any that prevent sandstorm from entering the sand and the dust any from entering any into the entering into the ice and the camel any have any this sophisticated any legs that is able any to come down any to the level of the human height that the human any is easily a human beings and can easily uh, what you call it uh, ride any the camel any from below. So all this any design that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us and it shows any that the designer is hakim, that is wise. The designer any possess any kudra, power, knowledge and uh, will 
everything and it is brought by Allah into existence and if we look at how Allah created the birds how Allah created any yani, the ants how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created yani, all this life around us so when we study any science especially when we study any chemistry we can see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but of course any yani, we study any science any yani, with the correct intention not any for the sake any of science but for the sake any of the creator of science so that we understand any yani, the creator of science that we understand the greatness any of this creator so we have to have iman we have any to have any faith any in faith any in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the relevance any of science any has a very any strong any connection any because any the quran and it speaks any about uh, the quran and it speaks any about science and uh, science any is a creation any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so by learning any science any we are able any to understand the manifestation of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his in his creation so that is why islam any encourage human beings yani to ponder and to study the uh, creations any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so i hope any it is clear inshallah may allah bless us any with tawfiq and hidayah uh, for today any we only any have any discussion any because any time any is limited uh, inshallah yani we will continue any next week any for the further questions any that are posted any inshallah ta'ala certain questions any has to be elaborated uh, certain questions any are straightforward so that is why any certain times any I take any some uh, times any to uh, answer any certain questions any lengthily uh, whereas any certain questions any can be answered uh, yani briefly Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina Muhammad Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen